from uh, Jim Ursay on the Pat McAfee show. So he went on and said that he wants to see Anthony Richardson start right away. And this was his quote. He goes, as you guys know, Peyton's year, we were 13, uh, 3 and 13. That's a guy who played a lot of college games and was really prepared as much as he could to, uh, could be for the league. So, for Anthony Richardson, it's going to be tough. We know that, but he has to play to get better. I mean, there's no question. Gardner Minshew could come out and play better early on, him just being a veteran. But we have to get Anthony on the field, and that's Shane Steichen's call when he decides to do it. And this was the big thing, right? Anthony Richardson barely playing any college ball. Uh, he played only, uh, was it, two primary years uh, with Florida. But really, the last year was his main year, his sophomore season. Uh, 53, uh, Basically, 54% completion percentage, 2,500 yards, 17 touchdowns to nine interceptions. I don't love the uh, the touchdown-to-interception ratio there. It's nearly, uh, it's actually less than a 2-to-1 TD-interception ratio. And so, we're, we're really seeing a situation uh, it, it similar to Trey Lance. Trey Lance, he, he sat out his uh, sat out the COVID year, but prior to that, he played uh he he played two seasons, three seasons before that COVID year. But really, in his three years of college, he really barely played. He barely played, and and going into the NFL, he only played really a game in two years. So Trey Lance was the rawest quarterback, and I think that's what a lot of people saw. Trey Lance was the rawest quarterback coming out of this draft class with Mac Jones and with uh, Zach Wilson and Trevor Lawrence and even Justin Fields. All these quarterbacks were more developed than Trey Lance, and it seemed to be a good situation for Trey Lance going to a Kyle Shanahan offense who was in, well, at least uh, the GM, John Lynch, fell in love with his intangibles. And, and I, I've mentioned this on the show before. Kyle Shanahan is basically like a QB whisperer when it comes to, you know, average to below average quarterbacks. He seemingly, you know, finds a lot of success because his offense is very, very simple. And that's why a guy like Brock Purdy, who's Mr. Irrelevant, can come in and go 7-0 and and look really great. He got hurt in the game against uh, Philly, so I'm not really counting that, but he started 7-0 and and looked phenomenal doing it. Uh, as a lot of people think, average to below average quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo, he got him to a Super Bowl and got him to another NFC Championship game. So what can you say about Kyle Shannon? This pickup was questionable, and now we have another situation where maybe a not-so-developed quarterback like Anthony Richardson is going into a team and, and the owner is saying to start him. Now, is that a good idea? I think, personally, it is a phenomenal idea. Because the problem with Trey Lance is, I can go back and forth with a lot of you out there, and I have in the comments section, because I, I've, I've talked about this Trey Lance situation, what the 49ers should do with Trey Lance for a very long time now. And I said the 49ers should move off of Trey Lance. If they're not going to use him, get something of value for him. Because if he stays on your team as the third-string quarterback, which on ESPN, he is listed as the third-string quarterback... What can you do besides try to get trade value because you're never going to use them? The only reason you would hang on to them is for a scenario like last year where Jimmy G's already hurt, Trey Lance got hurt, uh, Brock Purdy ended up getting hurt, and now you're left with, you know, Brock Purdy barely able to throw a single yard because his arm is destroyed, or you might have Christian McCaffrey trying to take snaps as well uh, on under center. You don't want that situation. I believe, was it uh, Josh or John Johnson came in in the game, Joe Johnson, whoever it is, uh, he came into the game at one point, and I believe he ended up getting hurt as well. So they really had no one. That's the only reason why you would keep three quarterbacks on your team is in case all of them get hurt. Otherwise, move off of a guy who I think a lot of teams, a lot of bad teams like Washington, like Las Vegas, could be interested in getting a guy who's six foot four and two hundred and what twenty pounds. He was incredibly mobile and seemingly has a lot of potential, as I've been told. Now, I think Trey Lance is a bust, and that, and one of the reasons why I believe that is simply because I don't get to see him play, and in the opportunities where I've seen him play, he has been god awful. And besides, it's not only when we see him play in that four-game sample size. It's also, as many pointed out, uh, when when me and my dad talked about, you know, Juwan Johnson's comment about Derek Carr versus uh, Drew Brees, that comparison, people said, oh, yeah, he was, he was uh, in practice with him for one whole season. Well, Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch also looked at Trey Lance for a full season, and they determined, hey, he wasn't that good. Let's bring back Jimmy G. Let's, uh, let's, let's draft Brock Purdy. The only reason you would decide to sit Anthony Richardson for one season 
which is the the difference between the Trey Lance situation and the the Indianapolis Colts situation is do you have a mentor where a raw quarterback like Anthony Richardson and like Trey Lance that they could sort of you know understand the game develop the game learn from that mentor the Colts really don't have anybody they got Gardner Minshew who you know he had one okay season the other one was Actually, he had two okay seasons, and then since that last season where he started was, I think, nine games, he's he's now a backup. Now, we saw him for two games uh, with the Eagles. He looked pretty good in one game against the Cowboys. They ended up losing that game, and I believe the other game they lost to the Saints, and, and I believe they couldn't even get past like midfield or something like that. It was pretty bad. But that's the type of thing, that's that's the type of mentor that the Colts have. They have a, they have a backup for the past three years. At least with the 49ers, with Trey Lance, they had Jimmy G, who made it to a Super Bowl, who is under the Kyle Shannon offense. I hate to break it to you all, Jimmy G haters. He worked very well when he was healthy within the 49ers organization. That's who Trey Lance had. Now their skill sets were different, but understanding the Kyle Shanahan offense, that's what Jimmy G, his role really was, is to mentor, to be there so Trey Lance could develop his game and basically take take items off of Jimmy G's game and implement it into his own to develop him as a quarterback. The Colts don't have that. So what they have to do is trial and error. The 49ers, right, for the past maybe four, five, six seasons, haven't had the room to do trial and error. Jimmy G was their trial and error period. And when he got hurt, they were left with Nick Mullins and and, and C.J. Beathard. Quarterbacks that don't usually win games and I really haven't seen in, in almost half a decade. So what we're looking at is... A opportunity where the Colts have time. They have time to trial and error Anthony Richardson. They do have room to have a lot of failure. I'm not saying go eight seasons with failure or even five seasons with failure. You have one or two seasons where Anthony Richardson can learn the game, understand the game, understand NFL speed, and that's the way you want to go. The 49ers have been in win-now mode for years so they needed a quarterback who could come in and, and immediately win like that. Trey Lance wasn't giving him that. He had trouble in practice with accuracy. He had trouble in games with accuracy. So that's why he wasn't a simple, okay, Jimmy G's out, let's go Trey Lance. Trey Lance, no matter what you do, you're in. Because guess what? When they drafted Trey Lance, the 49ers just came off of a season where they went 6-10 and 10 and were injury riddled throughout their entire roster. Jimmy G actually didn't really get hurt at all. But then they had an opportunity to put in Trey Lance when he was drafted and say, Jimmy G, you, your history has been injuries. Now, you just made it to the Super Bowl two, two years prior, but right now, we're ready to move on. We have this guy who we drafted at number three. We traded our future away just to draft this guy. We have to put him in. Instead, they went back to Jimmy G. Trey Lance came in here and there for some run plays and some bootlegs, and it was interesting to watch, but really, it was Jimmy G's team. And they even brought him back the following year, last year, when they basically said, Jimmy G, you're gone. This is Trey Lance's team now. They restructured his deal and signed him to a one-year contract. So I think this is a smart idea for the Colts to go in and say, hey, Anthony Richardson, you're our guy. Gardner Minshew, you could be there as a backup to mentor him and just be that backup piece that can give us some stability in case Anthony Richardson gets hurt. But this, the, the Colts have a trial period where they could basically say, let's go, we have a brand new head coach. By the way, Shane Steichen, I looked it up, and I have it right here. Shane Steichen offensively throughout his career has never been bad. In fact, outside of here, let me get a paper out. Outside of one year, which was uh, as the OC in 2021, all of his offenses have been ranked in the top 10. Number two, his offense was ranked 10th in 2019 with as offensive coordinator for the Chargers. 2020, it was ranked 9th. Uh, two years ago, 2021 with the Eagles, it was ranked uh, 14th. And last year, it was ranked 3rd. So Shane Steichen offensively has been great. Now, defensively, that's where we could see maybe some, uh, you know, not too good things. But we'll have to wait and see. So they have a rookie head coach who I do not think will get immediately fired if Anthony Richardson does go 4-13 or whatever the case may be. I do think the Colts are going to be a bad team because they have a super raw quarterback who I agree should be in and should start immediately. 
because he is raw. He needs NFL snaps, and that's one of the problems that Trey Lance had was he didn't get NFL snaps because the 49ers were in win-now mode, and Jimmy G gave them the, the highest opportunity, the highest percentage to win the, the largest amount of games. The Colts, they, they were pretty bad last year. They were terrible. Matt Ryan was supposed to be an upgrade over Jimmy uh, over uh, or, uh, over Carson Wentz and it turned out to be a severe downgrade. In fact, they got so bad they benched him uh, for oh, I'm forgetting the quarterback's name. Uh, Ellinger, Sam Ellinger, They're like that. That's bad. And even Nick Foles saw some action. Nick Foles, I feel like hasn't seen action in like five years. He got to see some action. So my bet would be the Colts are going to be bad. They'll probably be under six wins. And you know what? That's fine. They have a rookie quarterback who his athleticism is phenomenal. I think his comp was like Josh Allen and uh, and Cam Newton, more on the Cam Newton side. So if he has that comp, we need to see him develop under the Colts system with the brand new head coach who has a lot of success, you know, with Justin Herbert and uh, and and with Jalen Hurts. So we'll see how he develops Anthony Richardson. And besides, we, he should actually develop him somewhat like Jalen Hurts because Jalen Hurts has some of the same skills as Anthony Richardson, like his ability to run. His mobility is a huge part of his game, and that's the way Anthony Richardson plays. The only question is, how many hits can Anthony Richardson take? He's a young quarterback. He's going to be you know, jittery. He's going to be mobile. He's going to be agile. He's going to probably try to initiate some contact. We have to see you know, what happens there. But my bet would be the Colts are going to be bad. But it doesn't matter because you have a rookie head coach and you have a rookie quarterback that needs to develop. You do have pieces. You still have Jonathan Taylor. You have Michael Pittman. Uh, you have Pierce. You have some talent. And you still got Quentin Nelson on the offensive line. The offensive line I don't think is going to be absolutely abysmal like it was last year. But we'll wait and see because it was supposed to be good last year. And it turned out to be, you know, uh, taking guys off the streets and just moving them around. Move all these pieces around to try to make it work. And it turned out to be a cataclysmic failure. So we'll see. My bet would be Colts are going to go under six wins. But, you know, we'll see Anthony Richardson develop. And hopefully if he looks good, my my bet would be you're going to see uh, about 59 to 61% completion percentage. He'll probably drop in 30, ah, let's go 3,000 yards. I'll go 17 touchdowns and 12 interceptions. I think that would be a pretty good year if I do say so myself. But we'll wait and see exactly what happens next season. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, if you want to check out the full episode, make sure you click the I in the top right hand corner right now. If you want to listen to this show anywhere you go, make sure you go to anchor.fm slash the Harvey Hour or anywhere you get your podcasts.